What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk, and right now we're doing a quick side-by-side -side with the Lettuce Anamorphic X GoPro adapter against the standard GoPro Hero 3 Plus lens. Now the big difference with images is you're always taking photos in a 4x3 aspect ratio at a resolution of 4000 by 3000 where with um, video footage you're usually doing a 16x9 image generally at like something like 1920 by 1080 or, or a variation of that 16x9 uh, format. So here we have the standard GoPro Hero 3 Plus lens. So if you've been watching our video coverage of what an anamorphic lens is, you probably already know that it just gives you more information on the left and the right side of the screen by sort of squishing in your image and then pulling in more data on the sides. One of the big benefits of this is when we start to remove the standard fisheye distortion that we normally would from a GoPro Hero 3 lens is where we're still retaining a lot of that information on the left and the right that you would often lose when you took away the fisheye distortion from a normal GoPro Hero 3 lens. So we keep that sort of wide field of view, but we lose that standard fisheye distortion so for example, here we have the standard lettuce footage, and here we have the fisheye removed. You're still seeing we're keeping a lot of that window area as we go back and forth. Uh, we're just keeping a lot of that side information. We're not losing too much, and what we are losing was greatly distorted. We don't really need it, but if we were to compare this against the standard uh, normal GoPro Hero lens footage, uh, you're going to see we're still keeping a lot of that information on our left. So to remove the final bit of distortion like a video, we're going to multiply the width by 1.33 and we're going to get these nice little perfect squares similar to how we would with a video. So what that gives us is this more wide angle sort of landscape photo which is more appealing to us because that's how our eyes naturally perceive the world, not in this sort of 4x3 Instagram universe that we're kind of getting used to right now. Now that's not to say Instagram is dumb or anything, but it has its own sort of purpose and its own sort of universe. The human eye just generally takes in the world in a more rectangular format as opposed to a square format. So our mind sort of perceives that naturally as a more appealing and more correct way of viewing an image. So that pretty much covers the basics and I'm sick of looking at these squares, so let's move on to actual photos. Now this is a few buddies of mine. We're all snowboarding up at Big Bear Mountain about a few weeks ago when there was actual snow up here and we're using the lettuce anamorphic lens adapter to kind of take this sort of group photo so we're getting a lot of information on the left and the right but it's kind of squishing us down so I kind of went into Photoshop created this script that takes out the lens distortion and stretches out the image all at once and that's what you see here and I find this to be a pretty appealing photo and I think it just looks great I don't know about you guys it looks great the quality holds up I'm getting a lot of information on the left and the right I'm losing a little bit of that tree but for the most part once I move, uh, remove the lens distortion and just stretch it out, it's a really cool photo. So if one of your concerns is quality loss, we'll zoom in here and you can see where most, uh, most of our edges are still staying sharp. There's a little bit of softness and this is mainly because of our distorting the image and then undistorting and then stretching it a little bit. It kind of comes with the territory, but for the most part it holds up fairly well. So I had originally thrown up this last batch of images to kind of show you an issue I was running into, but it actually turned out to be user error. What I was doing was I was uh, double stretching the image and I just kind of had forgotten that I'd created this script that automatically stretches out the image when I'm removing the uh, fisheye distortion. So I'll mainly just be chiming in here and there to sort of point out things you might want to take note of. One thing I do want to point out is that when you're taking sort of portrait photos, that's sort of like um, tall photos, you're going to want to still do the standard stretch maybe to your width only and then rotate the image afterwards and that's kind of what we're doing here. Here we're stretching out the width of the image and we're removing the fisheye and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. It looks fine. Uh, we'll be able to cut off the tops and the bottom, but there's also going to be a lot of stretching towards the top and bottom of those frames so that's something to keep in mind when you're taking portrait photos. So I mess around with the idea a little bit of taking our already converted portrait photos and adding 1.33 to the width of these new photos. And while this is technically incorrect, it's overstretched now, sometimes it looked more appealing to me. So you can kind of play around with that and see what results work for you. So this photo is a really good example on how you can take sort of vistas and landscapes and turn them into these really cool establishing shots for your albums. Now we had just come out of this clearing and we have this awesome landscape in front of us and I just took this shot by chance. So after removing the fisheye, undistorting it and color correcting it, it becomes this cool sort of establishing shot for sort of the mood of our hike. And you can take a look at the bushes on the left that were super curved before, we're still retaining a lot of them and the quality comes out looking really good. Now we've applied the color correction to the original uh, raw footage right now so you can kind of get an A-B sense of like what we had and where we've gone. 
and I think this this shot just came out cool, and I did not lose a lot of those edges, like I was saying earlier before. If you compare it against some of the raw footage you're shooting, you're not actually losing a lot of that information on the left and the right, and you're getting so much more compared to the original uh, GoPro's 170 degree lens that when the the little bits that you do lose, it's not far far off from what you were originally getting with the Hero 3 normal lens. Anyway, that covers the Lettuce Anamorphic X GoPro adapter in full. Uh, if you guys have not seen it, we have a whole series of these videos going over this lens. Uh, you can access it in the link in the bottom right here. Uh, if you guys still have questions, feel free to leave it in the comments section or shoot me an email at markhawkcam at gmail.com. But I'm sure we'll be using this lens more in the future, uh, so be on the lookout for it. So we're going to start to have a lot more coverage of Sony's new HDR AS100 and the DJI Phantom 2 and how you could use that with your GoPro. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of that stuff. So anyway, I'll see you guys out there and thanks for watching.